we are going to talk about math today. So I wanted to discuss today the differences and some similarities between Abeka math and Singapore math. And so I'm not going to do full flip throughs through either one of these curriculums. There's already some great videos on YouTube and I'm going to link those videos down below um, to, so that you can easily go to those because they're, they've already been done and they're really good. Um, but I wanted to talk about the scope and sequence for Rebecca and Singapore and those just some of the ways that they teach some of the different concepts. Just a couple of things to note. So Abeka is going to have, this is the student notebook um, and it's got the textbook and the student worksheets in it. Um, Abeka will also have their skill sheets and then the tests and quizzes and you can get teacher's guides as well as a teacher's um, as well as a teacher's lesson plan. Abeka does have a few different components with their arithmetic curriculum. However, so does Singapore. <laughs> so I have the 4A for Singapore. With Singapore, with the dimensions version, you have it separated into two parts of the year. So you're going to have an A and a B for each part. What you can get, if you so choose, is the textbook and then the student workbook, then your tests and then you also have your teacher's manual. And so you'll have those components for the A portion as well as for the B portion. So if that, if you so choose, because you can choose whether to purchase everything or not. And actually in one of the videos that I'm going to link below, they kind of recommend you not purchasing all of those components for um, dimensions. But anyway, let's get into just looking at the different scope and sequences, as well as the way that they teach um, two different concepts. This is the Becca work text for third grade. It has everything in one, meaning that you have a short lesson and then you'll have your worksheet. And your worksheet for the most part is one page. So you have the front and then the back, and then this would be the next day. So for dimensions math from Singapore, for fourth grade, you have the textbook. Again, this is in color. And then the workbook is not. And then you have the teacher's guide and also for dimensions it's set up as an A and a B through the year so you're actually going to have to purchase two of the, two sets so an A set and a B set. I don't have the Abeka um, fourth grade textbook but what I did was print off the internet and their sample pages you can see it's a, relatively the same you have the lesson and then you have your practice and for lesson one, it's going to be two pages, and then you'll go to lesson two, and it's the same thing. You have your um, lesson and then your practice. So there are some great flip throughs with Abeka as well as with Singapore Math, and I will link those down below. Um, I wanted to go over the scope and sequence for both of um, these for fourth grade. As I said, for Singapore, there's an A and a B. So open sequence for level four, you will see A and then you will see the B here as well. Okay, so let's just kind of compare the um, Abeka and then the Singapore. So if I'm looking at this, I can say, okay, at the beginning, place value to millions, so numbers to one millions. So this is what you're going to do for Singapore. You're going to have approximately seven lessons on numbers to one million. So you start out with numbers to 100,000, numbers to one million number patterns, comparing and ordering numbers, then rounding five digit numbers, six digit numbers, calculations and place values. For Abeka, you're doing the place values to the millions as part of your very beginning of your lessons. So, you know, 
we're, we're looking at the same thing, right? And then we talk about addition and subtraction and you're adding with whole numbers and then subtracting with whole numbers with borrowing. So that it's extremely similar in what is considered their scope and sequence. What is not similar is how they teach it and then also how they utilize their worksheets. So let's go to there. So when a Beckett is introducing the place value, you have basically it's telling you numbers containing four, five, or six digits contain thousands, and then up to nine digits contain millions, and then it lists hundred millions down to one. Your practice includes basically reading the sentence and for the large numbers so that you know how to look at um, the number and be able to read it correctly. You know how to where to place the commas. You can write them out and then you can write from dictation. And this is all about writing large numbers. Then what Abeka does, they're considered a spiral method. So you'll go back through and you'll be doing problems that you have done before so that you can refresh your memory. So you have now, um, addition and you know addition and here's a little bit more extra practice with your numbers and then for when we get to lesson two we're not talking about the place value anymore we are now on to addition and so you look and you can see you have addition and then you go back and you have to write the numbers correctly for the place values, put commas in the correct position, and then we're doing some more addition. When I'm looking at what I'm doing for place value, I am doing these problems to begin with on this first page. And then I am have a little bit of extra practice. And then on day two, it dramatically drops the number of problems that I have that are related to place value. And then that is just how a Becca works, that you have a, an introductory concept and then you um, incorporate that into other worksheets. Now let's look at how Singapore addresses the same concept. So we're still talking about place value. So when you open it up, your first um, your first page is, where have you seen large numbers around you? And I wonder what the numbers mean. And I think that this is one of the big differences is Singapore is wanting you to understand what everything means, whereas Becca is wanting you to understand what to do. And so you have, you think of some jars of beads are in the art room. How many beads are there? And so you learn your place value. Um, and then how many, how many groups of 100 are in 10,000? How many groups of 10 are in 10,000? And so these are questions that are never really asked um, in the fourth grade of Becca uh, math. So right now I'm still um, on lesson one where we're still talking about numbers to 10,000. So th that is all lesson one where we're doing all of place value and only place value truly. And this is in the textbook. And then you have in your workbook, if you need extra practice, you can have these pages of extra practice. Um, there's three pages, one, two, three, for extra practice just for numbers to 100,000. And then for lesson two, we're talking about numbers to 1 million. So this is showing pictorially your numbers to 1 million. And so it's a very much more of how can I see this? How can I see it? How can I relate it to my life versus the numbers on the page. So now let's look at another concept and look at how the two different curriculums approach it. Multiplying three factors by two digit factors. So this is your explanation. Um, begin with the ones place, multiply each digit at the top from right to left, 
add any numbers you must carry, cross out the carry numbers after you use it, multiply the tens digit of the bottom factor by each digit in the top factor working from left to right, and then add the partial products. And so then you're doing your problems based on this explanation. Okay, and so you do, um, and so you do these four problems for this one day, and then you're going back and reviewing previous concepts. And then the next day, you have two more problems here, um, and then you're still reviewing other concepts. So now we're on day three, you have four more problems and then it's reviewing the other concepts. So again, this is the spiral method. So day five, after you had this explanation, day five, you now have two more problems, and then you're reviewing concepts. And then on day six, there are no problems for it. Day seven, you're starting a new concept and you have no problems that are going back to this multiplying three digit factors by two digit factor. So this is the spiral method. You, you're touching on so many things every day, there's no question. Um, and I like that, I like that you're not going to forget how to write the temperature. You know, you're not going to forget how to use a clock. You're not going to forget your fractions, but you're also, not going to get nearly as much practice in the multiplication of the two digit number. So this is the dimensions for multiplying a three digit number by a two digit number. So they're giving you a problem. A mixer costs $212. The bakery is buying 13. How much will they spend? So you have your place values here where you have two 100s and 110 and then two ones. So that makes 212. And then you have 13 of those rows. And then you're going to, they want you to separate it into three and 10 to make this multiplication easier and to understand um, the zero in the ones place when you're multiplying by the tens. Once you introduce the concept and they give you the example for it, you have two pages left in your textbook that to do these problems. And then you have your workbook. And so in the workbook, you're going to have, um, when, four problem, four pages, is that right? You're going to have four pages of problems that um, definitely some are easier and uh, some are easier and some are harder. And then the next day when you're here, you're going to keep doing quite a few of these and you're not going to go back and forth um, um, between all of the different concepts that you have learned. You're going to concentrate on this mastery. I hope that this video was useful to you. Um, there's definitely some differences between these two curriculums. First of all, you know, obviously dimensions, Singapore dimensions is considered a mastery. So you're going to understand those concepts um, frontwards and backwards when you finish those individual sections, whereas Abeka is the spiral where once you learn something, you're going to be touching on that a number of times. So it's definitely two very different philosophies in how to teach math. So I guess it just really depends on what your comfort level is, as well as what your students' learning style is. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.